guys, back in the office today with Nick from Innovate Finance. Thanks for joining us, Nick. Thanks, Casey. We thought we'd chat about houses versus units. What's the best investment? What's the pros, what's the cons? I think, yeah, obviously at the moment we're seeing a market that's flying along. Oh. So a lot of investors that both of us have been talking to for the past six to eight months and particularly first time investors, they're in a bit of a predicament where they're wondering whether now that houses are up here, should I be looking at units? What's the pros? What's the cons? And just some general advice on yeah. how just to get into the market. So it's always about that first step getting in. And I think once you're in, it's a little bit easier to then take the next step and move on. Yeah, that's what everyone's talking about at the moment is that it's not about, about what particularly, it's about getting in the market. So I think it's a pretty valuable thing to talk about as to what are the pros and cons of those two different asset classes. Definitely. So let's talk about houses. First up, a pro. Growth? Absolutely. More land, higher capital growth, that's a general industry. No? Higher buy-in point. That's probably, yeah, that's the con straight up. Obviously, we're seeing that the housing market is obviously flying a lot quicker than the, the unit market at the moment. That's There's no doubt about that, I'd imagine, across the, the Newcastle region. No. Definitely a, a pro, I believe, is the potential with what you can do for a house. So whether that's extension, renovation, to earn that higher uh, capital growth, but also rental yield in the same. Absolutely. Move. Like You think about it, you could pick up a, a two, three bed house on a 600 square metre block, and there's, yeah, there's lots of future potential. That's a great yeah, point. Whether that's renovation, extension, or even subdivision down the track. Absolutely. I think it's a higher upkeep of maintenance, mm, being yeah. that you've got internal and external of the property to upkeep. Yeah, and I guess the age too. Like Definitely. The majority of houses are probably older Oops. than units, um, so there's, there could be you know, untold little things sitting there somewhere. Or uphold your own insurance. Landlord insurance, also building insurance. That's another one, I guess, yeah, for, for investors to think about is the landlord insurance side, particularly what we saw through COVID, <laughs> probably something really important. It's not much more than a dollar a day, you have to have landlord insurance. <laughs> and I think just with houses, there's a bigger pool of tenants, there's lower vacancy rates, is what we're seeing in the Newcastle market at the moment. Yeah, and I think that's something that people probably also don't think about, is that when you're buying an investment, you've got to think about a like, core. Yeah, who's not your potential tenant? Yeah. Or who are you trying to attract as your potential tenant before buying that property? Great point. Units, townhouses, yeah. strata as we know. That's the, that's probably the, the number one thing. But I guess again, in contrary to houses, probably definitely across the board a lower buying point. Yes. So you can buy something that is just that one better just to get your foot in the door. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously the downside is the strata fees, which is your, your biggest outgoing on a strata investment property. And they like significantly vary. Depending on the building. Yeah. So definitely something if you are looking to buy a unit is to ask that question when you are buying, what are the strata fees? Because, and what's in the sinking fund? Because obviously that's your fund for the big maintenance jobs of the upkeep of the building. So you want yeah. to know that there's a fairly solid sinking fund there yeah. that you're not going to get some extraordinary levies come through that you haven't budgeted for. Absolutely, and I think that leads on to the next uh, point is that I guess a pro on the back of that, given that if your strata fees aren't too bad, obviously like the majority of your insurances and maintenance should be included, included. in what you're paying there. Um, so there's not as much unknown or... Mm. Yeah. yeah, unknown is it's probably a, the It's word. a one fee sort of fits all type of thing, if it, if it works correctly. Unless it's internal. You won't, basically the airspace is yeah, really yeah. what it is. Yeah. Downside is the smaller pool of tenants. There is less tenants looking for units than there is houses at the moment in the Newcastle market and the vacancy rate on units is slightly higher. I guess one of the other things from a finance perspective, I haven't talked too much about finance in this one, but it is like with units, there is different parameters. So say your studio apartments, there's very limited options for those. The apartments that are sub 40 square meters of floor I was going to say, we've seen that the other yeah. day come up. A yep. really tiny studio apartment and the deposit was... Very hard to finance. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously, again, you're looking at a pool of people that want to either buy or live in that that's a lot smaller. And the other one that we probably haven't had to worry about in years gone by in Newcastle is just those bigger developments. So the higher density living, some banks do have limitations on higher density. I mean, in the past, we've probably had 12 to 16 unit block complexes, but now we've got big towers going up behind us, so time to it's change. It's all happening at like Newcastle, yeah. is, it's the place to be, so definitely Absolutely. the place to be. We've got so much going on, revitalisation of the city, it's, it's exciting times. Absolutely. I guess I'll lock on on the back of what we've said today, the disclaimer is that it is just general Definitely. Advice. 
We're giving you the pros and cons for you to make the decision that works for you. So talk to your financial advisor, talk to Nikki Broker and have that plan of attack of what can you borrow, know your borrowing capacity before you go to the market. Yep. Like we've always said, it's all about having a good plan. A plan without a direction is a plan to fail. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.